chapter 13 and 14. And the background here is that the, the Israelites just came out of Egypt. They were so happy. They are looking forward to go to the promised land. And they were so excited. But then just before they crossed the Jordan River to possess the promised land, God told Moses in, in Numbers chapter 13 that you have to choose 12 men. One man from each tribe. So there were 12 men who were sent to spy the promised land or the land. And from there, we're going to take these two parts um, in our message this morning. So as they get ready to cross the Jordan to go into the promised land, God commanded Moses. And there were 12 men that were chosen. So to make the long story short, they went and then they came back. They spied the land for many days and then they came back. And when they came back, they gave a mixed report. They are, they are not united in the, in the report, in what they have seen. They have seen the same thing, but when they came back, they have two different perspectives. Two of the spies says, the land is incredible. Let's go take it. It's ready for our taking. God has given us the promised land. And those two spies were... Who were those? Joshua and Caleb. Now the rest of the ten, although before they were sent, was named from each tribe. When this dialogue is happening in Numbers chapter 13, their names were not even mentioned. The Bible just says the ten. So Joshua and Caleb said, let's go. We can take it. God is with us. But the ten says, yeah. It's a great place. It's a rich land. But, see, that's the difference. There's a but, there's a nevertheless in other translation. Yeah, the land is good. The land is flowing with milk and honey. But, see, that's most of us, us. Yeah, pastor, we're, we're with you. We're going to go with you. Evangelizing and going outreach. And, but, I have a busy schedule. I can't make it. And so I, they have all this list of problems why they can't take the promised land. They're not seeing with the eyes of faith. They're seeing with the eyes of fear. And as a result of that, of their unbelief, what happened to them? Were they able to cross right away? No, they got stuck there for another 38 years. That's because of their unbelief. This is why, beloved, daring faith Key to miracle is such an important campaign for us because we want you to be in the promised land. We want you to get there and get there soon. Not getting stuck for another 10, 15, 20 years. So, let's take a look at what happens when we see with eyes of fear. Just like these 10 men who gave a negative report. The first thing that happens is that we exaggerate our difficulties. Write it down in your outlines. Uh, there's, a, there's a blank there. I think the, the first word is just we. So what happens when we see with the eyes of fear? Number one, what, happen, what will happen is that we exaggerate our difficulties. Now here's the amazing thing. God has just delivered them from Egypt, right? They just came out from Egypt. And God just exercised his, his power by, by having the ten plagues, right? All of, all of those plagues are, are, the, are the hand of God. And now they're worried, they're scared of a tribe that stands between them and conquering the, the promise. And how quickly they forget. And that is also me. That's also us. How quickly we forget the goodness of God when we face a wall when we face a mountain in this life. And so when, when we look at problems with fear, <laughs> the problem gets bigger, right? When you're afraid of a problem, the problem gets bigger. Remember when uh, you first went to, the, to your doctor and you're scared of the needle? 
And it's like, you know, I, that is like a most an impossible task that you can do. You're so afraid, you're magnifying the problem. It's going to hurt, it's going to hurt, it's going to hurt. But then when it really happened, it's not really that scary. So the more you look at your problem, the more exaggerated it gets. So what happens is when somebody criticizes you, and the more you think on the criticism in your life, the more you magnify the criticism, and soon enough, you think that the whole world is criticizing you. Numbers 13, 27, 28. This is the negative report. He said, they said, it's a magnificent land, but the people living there are powerful and their cities are fortified and larger. So this then, the majority report of the spies was negative. Now, let me just, let me just point out something here. The majority report is almost always negative. When we have business meetings and we are having some visions and projects, there will always be the majority that we say, no, we can't do that. So anybody who's going to do something in this world is going to face and go against and go through the majority report because the majority of people are going to be looking with eyes of fear rather than the eyes of faith. So, listen, they said, we see these people, and they are powerful. Only two of the spies says, no, we can take them. Just one Caleb said that. Now, the, the problem is here. Negative attitudes are contagious. I don't know if you realize that. Negative attitudes are like virus. They, they contaminate Quickly, they, they just affect a lot of people so quickly. So let me picture to you again the excitement that the, that the Israelites are having. They were so excited, they, they, just, they just realized that, hey, we, we've walked for two years already, and, and promised land is just there. And everybody's so excited, maybe some of them couldn't sleep. But then came this report. Can you imagine... There were at least half a million Israelites who exited from Egypt. And there were two who said, you know, we can take it. There are ten who said, we can. So the excitement all of a sudden died down. And the Bible says, that night they cried and think of stoning them. And they said, we can't do it. And they were so affected. The second thing that happens when we see that with eyes of fear is that we underestimate our own abilities. We underestimate our own abilities. So the, the, the first thing is we, we magnify the problem, the mountain. Then the second thing is we put ourselves too small. We exaggerate the problem, but we underestimate our own abilities. Numbers 33, 13 says, We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. How, that's not true. I mean, it's just, their, it's just their imagination. And most of the time we're like that when we are facing a problem. We, we look ourselves so small and the problem so big. They were saying we're just like insects. We're just like a bunch of bugs compared to those guys because they're giants. They're going to eat us. And so, as they said this, you know what's, going, what, what's in their mind? They, are, they even say, we also look like to them. How do they know that? How do they know that the people of the land saw them? They're spies, Right? If you're a spy, you're not supposed to be seen. But because of their fear, they were saying, we look exactly like grasshoppers to them. That's their imagination, right? It didn't really happen. Now, there's a word for that. It's called projection. Now, right there in that wall is a, a, a thing called projector. And that thing is projecting what we see here. So... 
if you put the screen closer to the, to, the, to the lens, the picture gets smaller, right? And the more you back up, it gets bigger. So that's why we can see it. That's called projection. You're projecting the small problem that you're having in life. And you're saying, this is too big. So when you're afraid, when you're looking at things in a negative way, in the eyes of fear, you tend to project fear in your life and in the life of other people. So, they have been slaves for 400 years, right? Now they're ready to take the promised land. But they're still mentally enslaved and the condition is that they're paralyzed that time. Now, let me just apply this quickly to our lives. I hope that you're not thinking until now the negative things that you heard 10 years ago or when you were, when you were growing up. Because those words, when, when spoken, sometimes they don't affect us right away. But then if you meditate on those things, it got stuck in your life, right? Somebody said to you in the past, you're not going to amount to anything. And then you think, you're not going to amount to anything. Because you were told the, <coughs> those negative things. Somebody told you 20 years ago, you cannot accomplish anything in life. And you meditated on those, and you end up not accomplishing things in life because you believe that negative word that you have heard. Am I telling the truth? Now, to contrast that, our primary identity is not our failures. Our primary identity is not the faults and the sin in this life. Our primary identity is in Christ. Amen? Our primary identity is in Christ. So stop overestimating the problem. Stop magnifying the problem and underestimating your own abilities. Because the third thing that happens when you see with eyes of fear is that you get discouraged. That's why people, a lot of people today ended up a failure because they thought in the first place they are a failure. Now, I'm not telling you like uh, the doctrine of positive thinking. And the, no, we're talking about faith here. So they get discouraged. Numbers 14, verse 1 says, Then all the people began weeping aloud, and they, and they carried all night. Man, can you, can you imagine how loud that was? You know, people were wailing and crying because they couldn't cross the promised land. They're having pity party. Can you imagine every tent, every family are wailing and crying? Oh, we're not going to go to the promised land. And then after they got discouraged, they started to gripe about everything in life. That's the fourth one. We start to gripe about all of the things that happen in this life. Numbers chapter 14 verse 2 says, All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Huh. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. They picked on the leaders. Well, that's natural, even here in the church. Whenever things go wrong, who's to be blamed? The pastor. The pastors. They're not doing their job. That's why we're not growing, because they're just there. That's what they're doing here. They say, it's your fault. We wish we had died in Egypt. They wailed. So first they cry and now they can complain. Beloved, did you know that highly critical people are always insecure people? Those people that you hear criticizing everybody all the time, they're so insecure in this life. Because of their insecurities, they were having this, this doctrine in their mind that if I'm not going to be successful, then everybody's not going to be successful. I'm going to criticize everyone. I'm going to put down everyone because I am a failure. And I'm going to bring down everyone with me. So we underestimate our own abilities. We get discouraged. We gripe about our lives. And then we eventually 
give up and blamed God. Numbers 14 verse 3, they said, Why is the Lord bringing us to this land to be killed with swords? We're better off going back to Egypt. You know what they're saying here? They're saying, we know better than you, God. <laughs> and most of the time, that's what we say in this life. Why did I make that decision? I'm better off in my life before. So they're blaming God for letting them go into the promised land. Now, who's holding them back? Not God. They themselves are the ones holding themselves back because of their fear, and the fear is holding them back. So all of a sudden, they remembered the good old days of Egypt. We're better off in Egypt. What's better in Egypt? 